Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And our guest on this episode is an internationally recognized model. He's a fashion designer and an actor and also a reality TV show star. He was in the Big Brother Africa house representing Nigeria during the ninth season of the show. Let's make welcome the tall, dark, handsome Akintayo John Faniro, simply known as Tayo. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. Good welcome, to have you welcome. here. Th thanks for having me. You know? mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Boy, it's when I got in, you never told me uh, how handsome you think I am, you know. I mean, <laughs> maybe I've seen the handsome so part from okay, the okay, professional okay, eye. Table, so can we just skip but this it, talk? It's not a script, yeah. right? If I sometimes I feel, I feel like yeah. you're, you have gay tendencies. No, because like I'm why, saying, why I can't be on this table and then you guys are, and you're asking this. That's actually this. jealousy. Really? Jealous. Why jealous. would he yeah, be jealous yeah, of okay. if anything is happening okay. here? Why would he be jealous? Okay. You know, they've, not that okay, you are not Jesse. handsome, you know, but oh, they've oh. seen you so well, like all the time, you know. So I'm, I'm the guest. Oh, so you think it's not handsome? Mm -hmm. well, you guys will sort that later. <laughs> yeah, exactly what I'm saying. That can you guys sort Thank your you. issue later as well? <laughs> Fair, please calm down, calm down. So you look good. Who are Thank you wearing? You. I'm, I'm wearing my own uh, collection, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so I'm launching in a few days' time, or let me say a few weeks, mm. but before the end of this month, by the grace of God. So, I don't know if I can stand up and show mm -hmm. it off. No, you but. can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, so what is it's my called? design. What's it called? Tire Funeral. Is this going to be just yeah. for the men, or is there anything for uh, us? I will make some uh, unisex stuff. Okay. You know, I'm I'm not a I'm not good at sketching all these pretty dresses like mm. flowy gowns and stuff like that. But anything that is similar to what men wear, like maybe trouser suits, mm. uh, like mm. uh, a shirt dress, you mm -hmm. know, those kind of yes, things. Yeah. yeah, but I'm going to kill it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just. Maybe because um, they just ended Big Brother Nigeria. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things going on. I just want to ask, like, how was life after Big Brother Africa for you? Was it easy moving from just you to the celebrity status? Well, um, to God be the glory, it's, it's, uh, the, the story is, is great, you know. Mm -hmm. It's something that I'm grateful for. I'll do it a thousand times over and over again, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not easy, you know. Um, when I went into the house, I went in to come out with the money, you know. I didn't. I never prepared for. Well, you're very you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've, I was living in South Africa before the show. I didn't even plan of maybe after the show I would change where I was staying or something like that. Like you know. So I just went into the house to win. And funny enough, my part of my plans were actually to come out and then uh, just venture into my clothing business, you know. Uh, but the story came out. Uh, differently to what I was expecting, you know, uh, on the finale, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, that put me in a bit of psychological coma, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was, and then they, they actually presented me a psychologist, you know, to counsel me and all that, but I was really upset at that moment, and I felt Why I'm an African man, I could, yeah. I could deal with, no, don't worry, let's not go there. But I thought, <laughs> I thought like I could deal with my uh, my pains by, mm -hmm. by myself, you know. African men would need counseling too sometimes, but that time I felt too tough, you know. But it actually affected me a lot because many things, many good things happened after my uh, show. I got endorsement. I was on Tinsel, uh, Stargist, and doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm. But majorly, it was like I was just following, you know my. I wasn't, do you understand That's what I'm saying? It took me about two years, you know, mm. to actually get over uh, that coma, you get what I, to, to come out of it, you know? Mm. Uh, and then now another year to now start, you know, like, you know, try to understand myself again and all that. Because when you come out of the house, especially when it's Big Brother Africa, mm. where you have not spoken pigeon the whole of the three months, mm. you've not eaten Nigerian food the whole of the three months, uh, you are with people, from different parts of Africa mm -hmm. who may have their own reasons for hating you even before knowing you or whatever like so it's, mm. it's a different battlefield you know compared to Big Brother Nigeria you know so um, it, it did affect me you know it affected me and it took me a while to get over it even now you know I'm still you know uh, recently I deleted almost like all the posts on my yeah, Instagram actually going to okay yeah the sign of <laughs> so I just thought, okay, now I want to get. Now I'm older, more mature, you know, more calmer. I've learned real life experience, uh, real life lessons, okay, you now know. That you're older okay, so, so yeah. <laughs> you're older and calmer. I mean, I'm going to let your friend do the questioning, but before we 
came on mm. before we introduced you we're having a conversation on Udu. what Naira Mali said Oh, okay. We were all having a conversation, okay, and right. he said something about um, if you're married and you don't have a child, then you're still single. So if even I think he's the biggest way, yeah, even if have, basically that's what I mm. say if you're married. So if I think he's dumb, she thinks he's not dumb. I think um, I understand where she's coming from. I understand where he's coming from. So what do you think about that? Statement? Oh, you think it's insensitive? Oh, do yeah, oh yeah, I think it's insensitive. Yeah. I mean, um, one thing that I admire the guy for is. Is outspoken, you know. You get what I mean. I also have a bit of that in me. I I like to say what I feel, and I think the world should be like that. Mm. But when it comes to social media and the masses, how they perceive mm. things, you are judged uh, based on what you have said. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing wrong with what Naramali said. Um, personally, if you would ask me, or people would tell you, Tyre is married, mm -hmm. but I haven't gone to the altar or to do any sort of. Uh, marriage, mm -hmm. but I have two children, mm -hmm. so and I'm I'm living a family woman. life. I keep the same woman, you know. Okay. I I take my children to school in the morning. I everything is you get what I mean. I live a life. You feel me, you know. Mm -hmm. I know the kind of uh, if you ask me why I haven't you done this, there's a type of marriage that I want, the way I want it, and when I, or how I want to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not under pressure, maybe by my partner or my in-laws or whatever. Mm -hmm. But our children are growing. If you see my first son is. As tall as my waist uh, line now, you know, it's mm -hmm. five. So I may not be ready for marriage yet, but I'm already raising a king mm -hmm. or two kings. You get what I'm saying, you know? So when I, I can do marriage anytime, it's marriage. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying, you know? Um, and this is our generation, it's even funny. Even in the industry, I know <clears throat> many of my maybe colleagues in the industry or even in general who started their own family or maybe they got married maybe like a year or two after. I started, you know, building family, and today they are not together. Some lasted a year, some lasted two years or whatever. People divorce within just a month now, so there's actually no much respect for marriage anymore, you know. So sure. it's the decision to stay with someone, you know, mm. to, you get what I mean, and, you know, you build something, yeah, so that's it. So I have no disrespect for marriage or whatever, but, um, you know, you, the, the respect is more in the heart, you know, than just by the paper or the ceremony. Mm. All right, so... Um, you brought up the pain of the Big Brother Nigeria. So, um, mm -hmm. speaking of pain and emotional trauma, the whole world saw you cry. And before you would see you a grown, <laughs> and before you would see a grown man cry, it has yeah. to be really, really, really painful, right? Yeah. So, tell us about, take us on that journey of what happened in South Africa and um, the xenophobic attacks and all. Oh, that one. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So we all saw you cry. Yeah, you cried. I didn't cry. I was you crying. Crying, man. You cried. My, no. my test. The video. Of my whole body is burning me. Strangled. They beat me up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, see, bro, I mean, just look at me. Six feet, four inches. I can take on an average, uh, like, three men. You get what I mean? If we were to fight physically. I also have a... <laughs> I also uh, was once a pa uh, paramilitary, you know, person. I was in Nigeria, March and Navy. So physical strength is river, <laughs> you know. Uh, but in that kind of, uh, uh, you know, situation where... Uniform men were attacking me. I couldn't fight back, you know, mm -hmm. because fighting a uniform man would mean you're fighting the old country, the, yeah. the, the you know the authority. So I surrendered myself to the beating, you know. But if you were to put me in a ring with all those cops, I'll send some to coma, you know. I mean, <laughs> if you wanted to, to test me that way, you know. So, but um, what happened on that day was just a young, educated, and exposed African boy who knows his his right. right. And he knows he hasn't broken any law or, or rules, and he was just standing up for himself. And unfortunately, we have some good cops these days who want to do their job, and we have the ones who actually just want to wear the uniform and just, you know, just, mm -hmm. they're not different from thugs. You get what I mean, you know? And um, so I stood up for myself. They didn't like it, you know, and uh, they brutalized me, like you said, but it's an experience that. When I think of it, I think about the positive part. I was preaching say no to xenophobia. I've been on it for years. Mm -hmm. The first song I did uh, that say I shot no. a video for in 2015 was say no to xenophobia, mm -hmm. you know? And just this year, I had to get beaten before the whole world could hear that, okay, this guy actually is talking about something. Mm -hmm. And today, xenophobia, because of that incident, because when that happened also, some people were like, uh, maybe it was being too much. 
Why couldn't he just give it, give them his phone? Even some Nigerians, even in South Africa, mm. people that I was trying to fight for said, uh, why don't you just give them 200 grand or something like that? You know, that's their own opinion. But I don't want to live in bondage. You know, I want to be free. You know, um, so today xenophobia has become a household topic that everybody knows about. Because it wasn't just long after then that the actual thing now happened and people were like, oh, this is what I... And most of the things that I said before happened, mm. you know. So I believe that was a journey that I had to go through. That was one of my own fulfillments uh, fulfillment in life, uh, what God sent me to do. So I'm grateful God chose me, you know, but the video of that beating, I've not been able to watch it since that time and I don't think I want to go. So did Abby Kedda be just start crying you? again. Did Abby Kedda be reach out to you? Oh yeah, she did. Um, such an amazing woman, you know. Um, she reached out to me, the Nigerian Consular General in South Africa too, you know, they reached out to me. I actually felt uh, head swollen. Mm -hmm. I know many, um, uh, many youths of Nigeria, you know, feel that maybe because Tyre is a celebrity, you know, mm. uh, maybe because, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I just stood my ground and the news went all around, you know, it became viral, you know, and then they had to stand up for one of theirs. Mm. So if you're a Nigerian and you're going through something and they don't know about it and you expect them to come and fight for you, how? Okay, our so, time is um, far spent, but before okay. we go, what are you working on and what should people expect from you? All right, so um, I'm back to Nigeria now. Let's, okay. let's start full hammering time. that. Time. <laughs> well, full time, you know. Um, Come on, that, that doesn't must mean... have been more true. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it made you no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't put it that way. Don't put it that way. After the uh, attack, mm -hmm. I actually made a trip to America. I did mm -hmm. like four cities in search of a new home because uh, I was kind of traumatized and all that. Mm. But at the same time, I just thought, okay, maybe this place is not safe anymore. You know Sounds what I mean? Hard. And I wanted to find a new home. Mm -hmm. And it was actually uh, during my trip to America that I found every reason to know that there is no better place for me to be on earth than to be in my country, you know? So I came back home. I'm in Nigeria, not because they beat me in South Africa or because mm -hmm. I can still go there. Yeah, it's not like my, our police force is any Africa. better anyways. Huh? So it's not like our police force is any better. Uh, well, Nigeria. but I mean, anyway, let's leave them <laughs> out of this. You know, so I'm back home now in Nigeria. Uh, right now, I'm doing my fashion uh, uh, business, you know, very well. You see everything I'm wearing, I made them. And this is actually good. not, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you very much, but it's not my best, you know. Oh, and wow. I did, and I can, still, <laughs> I can still assure you that many more will come because this is my comfort zone. You can wake me I'll up in the middle of the night and I will. I've, I've walked the ramp for the biggest designers on the continent. And even before I became a model, even my high school days, I never used to buy ready-made clothes, you know, during uh, social activities. I used to sketch from that time making my own things. Mm. So I'm doing this now also as an actor. Uh, to God be the glory, I will be on... Uh, Jennifer's Diary, mm. and then uh, my siblings and I. I just uh, concluded a movie that I was shooting with Inkblot. Uh, it's called uh, Who is the Boss? Okay. Uh, we've shot that one already. It's a cinema movie. It will come out soon. And I still have some other producers that we're still talking and, you know, some maybe projects will be like maybe towards the end of the year or next year or whatever. But I'm here now, and I'm ready for all the tasks mm. and challenges. So how affordable are your outfits? <laughs> like, if I want to cop this right now, how much? to buy from me. Yes. So definitely it depends on the, the fabrics, mm -hmm. you know, it depends on I'm the style. like you what you're wearing right now, if I want we'll this. We'll talk about that. No, you sell know. your market. <laughs> Let people know how affordable. Like I can't wait to have my you know, anyway. Be because I, I, don't, I don't want to scare some people off to mm. think they can't afford ah, me. Okay. And at the same time, do you understand what I'm saying? So depending on the occasion, the style okay. and yeah, everything, we yeah, we'll work, down, work and according that's to that. how we wrap up this episode yeah. of Sea Time. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I remember you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. My thank you as always go to my co-anchors, Ewa Oritu, Ifeolu Oshukei, and of course, our guest, Ayo. Thank you for being here. My Thanks name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and see you later. <laughs>